Welcome to Allies or Enemies. This time we are looking at Sea Salt and Paper, a two to four player card game designed by Bruno Catala and Theo Rivière with art by Pierre Yves Gallard and Lucien Duren. Sea Salt and Paper is a simple deck of 58 cards, but like all fun card games, those 58 cards bring a lot more than the sum of those parts. And in this case, that is saying a lot, as those parts feature the most amazing nautical-themed origami you have ever seen. And we will get back to gushing about the artwork in just a minute, but first, let's look at how it plays. Each round starts with two cards face up and no cards in any player's hands. On a player's turn, they will either choose one of the two face up cards or take two cards from the top of the deck and choose one. Then if they have a pair of playable cards, they can play them. Playable pairs might include sailboats, which give you another turn, crabs, which let you choose a card from the discard piles, fish, which let you draw an extra card from the top of the deck, and the dreaded swimmer-shark combo that lets you steal a card from someone else. As players draw and play cards, they're trying to gain points. Most played cards gain one point for the pair, but bigger points come from sets like octopi, shells, and penguins, as well as from the various scoring cards and mermaids, which score for sets of colors. Also, if you ever get four mermaids, you instantly win, but that is very, very rare. Once a player has seven or more points, they may choose to end the round, either by saying stop and everyone counts up their current points, or by saying last chance, where all other players have one more turn and everyone but the winner of the hand only scores for their largest set of matching colors. The game ends once someone reaches the target score, which usually takes four or five rounds, and then a new champion is crowned. The only component here is cards, and they are phenomenal. Well, the actual cards are a decent stock with nice rounded corners, but the art on them is phenomenal. The art is actually photographs of origami, and that origami is unreal. It is all beautifully made and beautifully shot. Even if you never played this game, you could just leave these out on a coffee table as a conversation piece. Your first few games will be a bit slow, just because everyone will be admiring the cards. They are also all nice and clear and easy to play with, with easy to understand icons and double coding to help anyone that has trouble with the colors. The one tricky is we would have liked something to keep track of scores. Perhaps a simple card system like they have in Star Realms would have done the trick but it is easy enough to use a phone or grab a pencil. Sea Salt and Paper works for two to four players and it works great at all player counts. At two, it's easy to keep track of what your opponent's grabbing when they take from the discard pile. So it becomes very cat and mouse and the shark swimmer cards are almost must takes as if your opponent gets them, you know who they are targeting. At higher counts, those shark-swimmer combos do a good job of reining in the leader. And calling last chance gets a bit more stressful as there are a lot more people who could potentially beat your score. Game time also stays pretty constant as the target score changes from 40 points at 2 players to 35 at 3 and only 30 at 4. Well-made card games tend to be replayable by their nature, but Sea Salt and Paper feels even more so than most. That is largely because there are so many little paths you go down each round, depending on what cards you draw and what is available. If you get an octopus early, you may go for a set collection. A sailboat scoring card might get you grabbing all the sailboats and comboing extra turns. The captain will have you hunting for sailors for a big score, and once you get two mermaids in your hand, it is almost impossible not to chase the mythical instant mermaid win. We have yet to see it happen, but when it does, tales will be told and songs will be composed. It is impressive what can be done with 13 types of cards in just the right distribution. 
Sea Salt and Paper is our surprise hit of the year. The art makes it instantly interesting, but the gameplay backs up that look 100%. We were hooked on this one, even when we were just playing it online. But now that we've got a physical copy, it pretty much lives in our backpack. We will say that the score counting can get a smidge complicated with some hands. You will get used to it, but it's a small barrier for those first few plays, and experienced players will have an edge as they start to get a sense of the odds. But those are really tiny points for a game that manages to do something unique, fun, and infinitely replayable with just a deck of cards. If you like card games, or origami, or just fun, there is really no reason not to bite. And that is it. Have you played Sea Salt and Paper? What did you think? And what other card games do you love? Please let us know in the comments. And as always, please do like and subscribe. And hopefully, we will see you all next time for another game.